Uh, good evening, good evening, good evening. And we want to welcome you all to the discipleship class. I'm Apostle uh, Albury. But the message is one body in Christ in love. Amen. Amen. Message to the body. Um, we're going to, um, I want everybody to share, to share. Uh, let someone know that we're, um, you know, we're about to break some bread in the word of God today, you know, and praying that the word will be a blessing to the hearer. The Bible said, let him who have an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. So, God, I, I want to say this before we begin to go into prayer, Lord, let every ear, let every eye be open to see, let every ear be in a position to hear, and let every heart be in a position to receive, God. Let nothing be hindrance, Father God. Let nothing hinder, O oh, gracious and glorious God, your word going forth today. Amen. Amen. So, Father God, we thank you on tonight, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Father God, that dwells here, God. God, we thank you, Father God, that we can ask these things, Lord God, for your favor, your peace, your comfort, your will, your joy, your strength, your word to reside deep on the inside of us, Lord God, and it can so God, we thank you tonight, Father God, in advance for the expectation of your word. So God, we thank you in advance, Father God, for you being in Father God. That will go for Father God and fall on good. To broken down in such a way, God, that you just speak. Every word be penetrated the place where you have called it to be, Father God. Let it, let it, let it go out intentional, Father God, with a specific purpose for the visual, Father God. God, we thank you that we are on target in the word tonight, Father God. So people will break forth in deliverance, God. People will break forth in healing. People will break forth with an understanding just to do the things of the Lord. So God, we thank you tonight. We pray for those that are traveling. We pray for those that may be tuning in live, Father God. We pray, God, that the word will go forth like a wildfire. God, we pray, Father God, that people will have the urge to share, Father God, that there will be a boldness about being a believer, that we will not be um, just, you know, thoughtful about, you know, what should we do or what, what can we do, God? We will immediately respond with sharing. We'll immediately respond with that action to show and be a witness of your love tonight. Father God, so God, we ask that this word goes forth, that it goes far, and that it accomplishes what you have set forth for it to do. So God, we thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, we're going to talk, you know, and what we've been, um, y'all know we've been talking a lot about um, the heart, the vision, and I, like I said, I believe that God, um, is desiring us to stay there for a while because God is desiring to deal with his people's heart. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we know that the heart, I want to say, if anybody remember what is what three components of the heart. Mm -hmm. the, intellect, emotions, yeah. the intellect, the emotions, and your desires. In other words, God wants to deal with how we think, how we feel, and what we want. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, um, our heart is our intellect, how you think, our emotions, how you, your, your emotions, how you feel about stuff, and what you desire. And God has to deal with people's heart because the it's interesting when God talks about the heart, He says man's heart is wicked and deceitful, and above all things, right? Could you, you know, think about the woman when, when the scripture says that man's heart is wicked and deceitful? And, and what did He say? Um, where is that scripture? Um, I don't want to make sure we. Uh, he said man's heart is wicked and deceitful above all things. And, and what's interesting about that is that. If man's heart is wicked and deceitful, right? And I want you to look at this. If man's heart is wicked and deceitful above all things, and God says that. And the heart is, this is what it is. And the heart is how you think, um, how you think, how you feel, and what you uh, what you desire. Then what is God actually saying to man? He's saying if, if God is saying that our heart is wicked, if, if man's heart is wicked and deceitful, and we know that the heart is your intellect, your emotions, and your desires. So that's so God says the way we think. God says, without God, the way a person think, a way a person feel, and a way a person desires are not in alignment with God. They're not in alignment with God. So God calls, if it's not in alignment, and, and we started this on Sunday, and Sunday God me said this, everything that's not done in faith, remember this, everything that's not done in the word, the Bible says it is wicked. So if, if it's not lined up with the word of God, it is wicked. So 
Either we believe the word or we don't believe the word because the Bible says this is what God says. This is not what apostles say the word. The Bible says that faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing what? The word of God. The word of God. So it is my ability to hear the word of God. But the question is, do I believe the word that I hear? Is it or is that word uh, suspect, suspect to uh, opinion, to mm -hmm. people's thoughts, to people's feelings, to, in other words, I'm going to have my, if, like the God said, love your enemies. When God said, love your enemies, is that is that a statement that to be left up to someone uh, to assume to, well, I'm going to love my enemy if they do this much too. Mm -hmm. I'm going to love my enemy if they do this too much. I'm going to love my enemy if they, or is that, does he really mean love your enemies? And then he said, do good to those who hate you. Mm -hmm. God says, do good. Now that's interesting. I and mean, let me give you so you can understand this is not a pop, it's not me saying this. In, in verse 24 in the book of John, chapter 5, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears the word, my word, and believe it on him. A lot of me, I want to let me go back. Hold up. I might want to go a little further. I did. Let me go back. Excuse me. I want to make sure I get there. I will get the right place. Give me, hold up. Let me go to go to Luke 6. Luke 6. I want to make sure uh, we talk about when he says, when God talks about being able to oh, verse 27, but I say unto you, which hears, love your enemies and do good to them which hate you. How could that be interpreted? Somebody said, well, I'm going to interpret that to love my enemies. And I think that's the problem. When men try to interpret it in the way they, remember now, the heart is your intellect or emotions and your desires. How you think how you feel and what you want. So I can take that scripture and interpret it. And well, he said, love my enemies, but I'm gonna love my, this is what you hear people say, well, you know, you talk, you mess with my kids. Like you hear her mother might say, if you mess with my kids, that's where I draw the line. So she's saying, God, I draw the line to this point right here, but that's kind of interesting when she might draw the line when it comes to her kids, but God gave up his kid. Mm -hmm. So how are you gonna justify that to God when God actually, the Bible says God so loved the world that he mm -hmm. gave his only begotten son. So when you say that God wouldn't understand a mother's love for her children, that wouldn't be absolutely true since God sacrificed his son. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but the purpose of him sacrificing his son was for those to have life. So today I want to, so we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about the heart, the vision, and the, and, and, and the culture. But we're going to stay here a little bit. We're going to talk about Because I want to talk about the heart. And understanding what does God heart, because there's a scripture, and this scripture is in, it's in the book of Amos. And I thought this was so funny. In the book of Amos, the third, Amos 5, 3, it says, how can two walk together unless they agree? I want y'all to grab it. How can two people walk together? And I know in the world, I'm going to tell you how crazy we've got in the world. The world be like, opposites attract. You know, opposites bring drama. Mm. The truth be told, in, watch this, and things that really have substance in it, in a relationship where there's true substance with two people, that cannot be opposite, or it's going to bring drama. Now, you could say, well, I'm an outdoors person, right? And you're an indoors person. That's not substance. That's, that's cool, but it's okay for you to be indoors and an outdoor person. And, we, and, it, and if we have the things, watch it. If me and you have things that have in substance, some substance in our relationship, we'll work together because sometimes I will, because I love you, I go outdoors so I have some time for you. And you can come indoors for me. We, we can work through those things that really are kind of external from the person. Because the outdoors person, indoors person, that's kind of external things, how we have fun. But I'm talking about the core of who someone is, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, physically, the core of who that person is. How do we think? Because if we don't think the same, well, let's say I'm, I'm going to talk to uh, uh, Shaquilla. Shaquilla. Okay, Shaquilla, I'm going to talk to you. We got, they said we got some things in common. Okay, you believe that a relation, I, I believe, you believe relationship is between, between one person, right? Well, my thinking is, I believe that I should be able to have you and a couple of other women. So in that mindset, in that thinking mindset, you might want to know that before you get involved with someone, because why? Because the way I think in my heart is I'm not going to be faithful to you. My, Because in my heart, I perceive that I like you, but I like, I want to be in a position where I like other women. So that would be what you call a deal breaker in the heart situation. Yes, Everybody with me? Yes. That's a difference. So if men can have deal breakers in a relationship when it comes to a heart situation, why do we get mad with God if God got deal breakers? Mm -hmm. 
You might, you might have thought that it's funny how people get mad and angry with God because they perceive God should not have any deal breakers. In other words, and the Bible doesn't say God love. The Bible says God is love. John says God is love. So if God is love and love radiates from God's heart, I mean, his heart means the way he thinks, the way his emotions is, how he desires. And the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? I say, God, this is good because we always think about that scripture as in relationship to relationship with one another. Well, how can I walk with you unless I agree? How can I walk with you unless I agree? That means I have to agree with you mentally, emotionally, and I'm going to agree with you uh, as far as what we desire. So, but yet when it comes to God, I feel like I don't have to agree with God. And that's interesting. So if I would perceive that anybody you think you might want to be in agreement with might want to be God. Why? Because if he is the very essence of love, to not be in agreement with him is not to be in agreement with how love should act, how love should move. But the, Bible, but the word of God says, in him we live and move and have our being. In other words, the Bible says, in Christ, we live, move, and have our being. So if I'm in him, he, if his word abide in me and I abide in him, and his word is a reflection of his love, because you tell somebody's love by their words. Why? Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. I can tell how you love just by listening to you for a while. Why? Because when you speak, your heart will tell. If I listen, I'm going to know what come out of your heart. Yes. Amen? I'm going to know what come out of your heart. So that's interesting. Since Jesus is the mouthpiece of God, then we should be able to tell what's in God's heart by listening to Jesus. We should be able to know how God think about people, how God think about men, how God think about women, how God think about you. There is nothing in life that the word of God does not address and tells you how God thinks about it. It's interesting. See, people, when God, let me tell you something what's interesting about even marriage. You know what, do you know what God tells a husband? Uh, if we understood this, God tells a man to love his wife as Christ loved the church, that he gave his life. So if you are a man and you are what? Remember that we're talking about? We're talking about how can two walk together? And you're talking about being in agreement with God, then you might not want to take a wife if you're not if you're not willing to love her as Christ loved the church. I'm, I'm not talking about love her hips and her lips and all. I'm talking about he said love her as Christ. And Jesus, God gave His life for the church. He was willing to sacrifice the very thing He loved Himself, coming in the flesh and died for His. See, but if we understood this, it would cause you to be able to see through some foolishness. It would be able to cause you to see through man's mindset and God's mindset. Are we are we getting this so far? So what I, I want my own. So I want y'all to make sure in Amos, where we where we going from tonight is how can two walk together unless they agree? But we're going to talk about walking with God. We're going to talk about walking with love, and can we walk with love in agree in agreement in agreement? And when you and when you walk with love in agreement, now. And I'm so glad. Anybody glad that God's love is more powerful than our love? Yes. yes. Anybody glad that God already know when he's asking you to love, he's already, he already know that you don't have it. Yes. Come on. That's why, that's why, that's why he choose you. Because he don't, because he, <laughs> he know he ain't going to wait for you to choose him. Why? Because you would never had that kind of love. Mm -hmm. You don't have that kind of love operating in you. So he going to wait. So he will choose you. But in choosing you, nobody chooses a person. Well, I'm going to put it this way. No one should not choose a person or not desire for that person to be the greatest person they can be. God doesn't choose you without him knowing that he wants you to be. God doesn't choose you to abuse you, to verbally, to physically. God doesn't choose you to mishoot you. That is not God. Love don't act that way. So when God chooses you, that's why, that's why Jeremiah 29, 11 says, his thoughts to you are never evil, but to give you hope in a future life. Because when he chooses you, he chooses you, if his thoughts are not evil, but to give you hope in the future, he chooses to elevate you to a place of love and mercy and forgiveness and righteousness and holiness that you can't go to without him. Mm -hmm. So the relationship is going to elevate you as a person. The relationship with God will elevate you as a person if you humble yourself. Yes. See, if you go in already thinking you know, you ain't ready to grow. But if you go in and say, you know what, God, I don't know what relationships about. I don't know what love is about. I don't know what it's all is about. But you do, because you are the creator. It's like going to iPhone. If I'm gonna go to iPhone to get my iPhone fixed, 
the guy who designed it, I might not want to come off arrogant. I might want to come off being humble enough to be able to learn something from him to see the one designed it. Then let me ask you a question. Wasn't God who designed man? And out of man, wasn't he who poured out water? So who would best to know how men and women should interact with one another than the one who designed them? And yet we're trying to interact with each other without God. And that's why we got all this pain, hurt, brokenness, all this anger and unforgiveness, all this sorrow, all this regret. Because why? We have tried to interact without the one who designed them. And when you try to interact, then you got your emotions. You got your feelings based off of what you want. But the one problem with that is, you might want something different than the other person wants. And now you, you agree. And now, remember now, we don't turn to society. It's physical. It's physical. So we're going to erase God and go physical. So I want you, because in all that garbage, I love you at first sight. How are you going to love something you don't even know? That don't even make sense. That makes absolutely no sense at all. You're going to listen. No, what you love is what you see. So let's be honest, girl. I love them hips. I love them lips. But what you got to understand is, behind those hips and lips, could be something so wicked, ungodly, can be something that is not in alignment with something that you really want. Faithfulness. It can be something that you're not in alignment with what you really want. Truth and loyalty. The things that make love for real. That's what makes love for real. I don't care how cute you are. If you're a liar, that relationship is not going to be good. You know? Am I right? Think about it. If you talk, I don't care how much you talk, I'm raising, I don't care how I try to do If that person is, if, if they are un, if they are unfaithful, I, I counsel cover unfathful. Do you know I didn't read it before it looks so beautiful? The woman crying every night. I counsel why? Because the dude, because she wanted the dude, and now I get a call today. I'm just gonna get, I get a call today. You know this guy called today? Here's what he he unfaithful, but let me take the call. They separated now. And different days are separated. The guy got they got cameras in the house. He looked at the house. His wife put on a shirt for a, a, she put on a shirt, something he finds very inappropriate. She turns the cameras down in the house and leaves the house and don't come back to the house till three o'clock in the morning. Who wants to deal with that type of foolishness? That ain't love, that's lust. That's perversion. Who wants to that? Oh, that gonna make you angry, want to fight where you was. Who you, what, what, why are you leaving this house dressed like that? Three All that incites is un, unfaithfulness, untrust. That ain't love. But oh, but, but but you love the way she was built. You love her education. You can get a PhD and still be a liar. Yes, you can. Uh, the, uh, educational, according to the world standard, don't make you a righteous person. So I have to get in a relationship. So I need to be in a relationship with who? Because he equates to what? But if I'm a walk with him, I got to want his mind. I got to want to know his heart. It's like a relationship. I want to know what's in your heart. Do you love me? Do you care me? When I walk with you, I want to know what's in your heart toward me. Amen. Amen. When you walk with someone, you might want to know what in, what's in their heart towards you. Because why? Because not knowing what somebody what's in somebody's heart can put you in a situation that's very painful. How many get what I'm saying? Not knowing how somebody thinks. Not knowing because y'all know in the movies, I see you, you see me. Five minutes in the movie, we having sex. Next five minutes, to my, I love you. <laughs> like, I love you too. Y'all know I'm not lying. That's the movie. And then they sitting there in bed, like, like they don't know each other. Oh my God. I saw you. And I you. Then you find out later in the movie, she was married. Mm. And he like, how could you do this to me? You know, how could you give your body to somebody, you, your heart to somebody you didn't even know? Yeah. Now you sitting here thinking about somebody. You see, you got your emotions connected to someone. And now you're desiring someone that's connected to somebody else. You know how painful that is to be wanting someone that's connected to somebody else? Because you didn't take the time to find out what a condition their heart was in. So God says, how can two walk together unless they what? Agree. I can't hear y'all. Unless they what? Agree. Agree. The point of agree. Uh, the point we're going to talk about agreement is love. God, now I want to take you... We're gonna go, we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk a little bit about that from tonight. Um, I want to go to uh, Galatians, the fifth chapter. And I'm gonna say this. 
Um, I would that they were. I'm gonna start at. I'm sorry. I'm gonna start at the twelfth verse. No, I'm gonna start at the thirteenth verse. Cause I'm gonna start at the thirteenth verse. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Say you've been called to be free. You've been, you've been called, called to, to be, be free. free. You've been called to be free. He says you've been called into liberty. This is what he says. Um, liberty. Only use not your liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Don't. You, in other words, when God frees you, don't use your liberty to hurt people, but use it as a means to serve people. Understand that the, the, the relationship that you when you walk in one accord with God, Jesus didn't come to bring you to a place of bondage. He came to bring you to a place of freedom. But in that freedom, use it as a means to serve one another. Not to what? Use it as your personal gain or to use people. Do we understand that? He says, use it as a means to serve one another. Watch what he says next. For all, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He said, all the law is fulfilled in this, is that you love thy neighbor as thyself. But it's interesting about love. Yeah, I got to get, remember we're talking about walking in one accord. We're talking about walking in agreement. But there's a commandment before that. There's a commandment before that says to love thy neighbor as thyself. It is that, that commandment says, love God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. So what is he saying? If you walk in agreement with God's heart, you'll walk in agreement with loving yourself. If you love yourself, you will know how to love others. So God's heart is going to teach you how to love God. Love is going to teach you how, love is going to teach you what love is. So watch. So if I'm walking with God in agreement, right? I'm agreeing with God. And God, this is the God that says, when we were all sinners, all of us who have sinned, he said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So God's love was a sacrifice that others might be saved. Oh, y'all better get this tonight. God's love was manifested not with goo goo eyes, not with goosebumps, not with flowers. His love was manifested through him sacrificing. So, watch it. And what he sacrificed was for the betterment of those who did not even like him. Mm. It was for the betterment. So God has given us an ideal of what love is. Love is not all about when things are going great with flowers and candy. Can you love when things go bad? Can you love someone when they won't do what you ask them to do? Can you love someone when they won't go where you want them to go? Can you love someone when they're not what you think they should be. When they say something to you that you don't like. Because God's love was manifested to a people who did not like him. Because let me ask, let me ask this question. How many people in this room have sinned? All of us. So the wages of sin is what? Yeah. So the truth be told, everybody that's sin deserves what? Yeah. Because if God's law is just, you can't change something that's just. Let me, let me, I know this might be hard for us to understand this in America because depending on who you are, your celebrity status can cause the law to be altered. So that shows that the law couldn't have been that just if it could be bought. But because God is righteous and he is love, the things that he established they come from a place of righteousness and love. So if God tell you, thou shall not commit adultery, that is good because in committing adultery, you break people. Amen? Mm -hmm. So when you commit adultery, you break the law. Now, no matter how much good works you do, you can't undo the law you broke because there's a penalty for that law. Y'all better hear this. See, we think you can, you can do enough good works to overshadow the law you broke. I uh, know. That, that doesn't even make sense. If you think about it logically, that makes no sense. Because the reality is, if I go into a gas station and I rob it and I shoot someone and they die and I escape and go to Mexico and I shot them when I was 16 years old and in Mexico, guess what? I got myself together. 
Now I'm, now I'm 38 years old. I have become a doctor. And in Mexico, I'm, I, I become a doctor and I'm trying to atone. Watch this. I got this. I'm trying to atone by get all the kids to come in. I'm giving them free medical care. I but watch this. Since the time I was 18, I have served my life diligently to help people. Now let me ask y'all this question. If that person was to come back to America on vacation and they run his fingerprints, and when they run his fingerprints, their fingerprints come up when he when he did with 16, and he go in that courtroom, or they gonna tell him. Because you became a doctor and all the works that you did in Mexico, we just gonna let you, we're gonna just let you escape because we're gonna let you go from your works. And we and we're gonna let the person you murdered, we're gonna just let you go. Are they gonna say that? I promise you they're not. They wouldn't, they I promise you, it don't, they don't care what he did in Mexico. Someone has to be pay an atonement for the life that he took. You know what I'm saying? Now. The greatest, the greatest look to God is why he in the courtroom and that judge is about to give him a life sentence because of what he did, because someone has to pay the price. Could you imagine that the person he killed, brother, stand up and say, I'll take his sentence. Let him go free. Let him go do. People gonna look at that brother like, is he crazy? He killed your brother. And they're gonna be wondering, he looking crazy. But see, what you're going to be wondering, what kind of love is there? Mm -hmm. What kind of love will cause you to take his penalty? Because somebody's going to have to serve. Somebody going to have to serve him 25 years. Why? Because that's what, it, that's what the law requires of you. Because you broke it. And see, when you don't understand that, you will never understand the magnitude of God's love and what he did. When you don't understand that you actually broke a law and the penalty to that law is death, then you would never understand the full magnitude of God's love when he sent his son. Because the, what, because the penalty that his son took is a penalty that each and every one of us should take. Why? Because the only way you ignore a law if you find a law not to be valuable in the first place. But if that law happened to be righteous, to become unrighteous to break the law, then someone has to pay the penalty. Because guess what? Someone was hurt or broken or misused or something happened to someone because you broke their law. Laws are not only to protect you, but are to protect those who are around you. So when you break a law, you don't only hurt you, you hurt other people. Anybody get my point? So the very act of God sending his son as a lamb is an act of love. Because Jesus did no wrong. So for him to die, or the penalty for us to be free is an act of love. So if we accept this Jesus and the word of God in your heart, how is it that you perceive that you're not going to act, move with that same spirit to have to give an act of love to those who might have been? That's why he says in the book, I said, that's why he tells us in, 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 in Luke, he tells us in the book of Luke, love your enemies. Why? Because Jesus loved his enemies. What do you mean? Because everybody in this room that raised your hand that you sinned, mm -hmm. you were an enemy. He said, watch this, do good to those who hate you. Everybody in this room that raised your hand to sin, mm -hmm. he did good to you. When he went on that cross, he's doing good to you. He's doing good to me. Okay, let me help us out because y'all looking at me. How many of us ever lie? How many of us know the word of God said, Don't that, that no liar should enter into the kingdom of God? How many of us had sex when we weren't married? We was like, hey, you know, we was out doing, we were, we was doing, we, we was doing up. The Bible says there's not fornication or adultery. So we sin. So we, and the word of God says we were enemies of God. Because come on, when you move opposite, when you move opposite of someone, then you are an enemy of the person you were. In other words, if I come and mess and I and, and I and I'm like, and I hit you, right? And I keep hitting you, and you say, please stop hitting me, because I'm doing opposite of what you're doing. Why would you perceive me to be your friend? That's why I just y'all gotta get, we gotta get this tonight. If, 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 if I, if you, if you put your purse down. And you worked hard for your money. And I took your money without asking you. 
And then you forgive me all the time. And I keep taking your money. Why would you consider me a friend of yours? That what I'm doing is violating your space, your respect, your work. That you would, so if we violate God's word, why would God consider us a friend? Even though we are his creation, we might not be his friend. Why? Because your son might be your creation, but if they move contrary to your standard, you're not going to consider them, you're not going to consider them at one point your friend. Right or wrong? Come on. Man, if you had a child and your, you push in and your child is coming in your house, letting their friends in your house, still wreck your furniture. At one point, you're not, even though you might love them, you're not considering them as a friend because the way they've been moving. So we were not a friend of God when we move. When you move contrary to God's word, you're not a friend of God unless you, watch this, and some of us, before we knew God, you perceive moving not according to God's word was doing your own thing. But a lot of us, when you did your own thing, you were hurting people. You were causing people to be broken. You were causing people to not trust. You were causing people. Sin hurt people. Sin break people. When you move, when you move opposite of love, tell me how you can move opposite of love. Because opposite of love is hatred. How can you move opposite of love and think you're doing something good unless you don't know no better? So the truth is, maybe we ain't know no better yeah. because we were blinded by sin. But when you became illuminated, means when you became enlightened by the word of God and you became awakened and I began to realize, you know what? Yeah, I need you. I like you. I have a sex with you. If it don't work, I'm stepping. I don't care if you get pregnant. I'll come visit the baby when I get time. And therefore, so now we got a society where we babies are being destroyed. Children growing up without their parents. But we having fun. It's just fun. And we're moving. But this fun. The Bible says, I don't want you living that way. Yeah. But we choose to live that way and say, well, you know what? I don't care what no, what, I, I don't believe in no God. I don't care what, but the very God you don't believe in is causing millions of babies to die in an abortion clinic. And we say, this is acceptable. And God says, no, this is not. Why? That's not love. It's not love to that unborn child to be snatched out of a womb. And listen, what I'm saying to us, I'm not saying, this is not about shame, it's about truth. Because we have all sinned, so I can't cast no stone. I've had an abortion. I'm like, Apostle, you had an abortion? Yes, why? Because if a young lady had an abortion, that was my seed. That was my seed also. And actually, when I was out, I paid for it. Yeah, I'm being be transparent. Paid for it. Didn't even think paid for it. Didn't even think. And after I got saved and got the word of God, I was like, your heart weak because you want to play the game. But you don't want to take the responsibility and people get hurt and broken. So God's word is righteous because his word is trying to do, cause us to move in a way of love that we will not conduct or move in behaviors that will cause somebody else damage. There are women damaged and hurt because of men. There are men damaged and hurt because of women. There are children damaged and hurt because of parents. There are parents damaged and hurt. We got racism. We got why? People just hate people because they won't yield to God. Well, wait, didn't that God, wait, no, hold up. A God that told you what? This yielding to God. God says, but I say unto you, which here, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them that despitefully use you. This is what love is asking you to do. And we saying, no, you do me wrong, I'm gonna do you wrong. And God says, well, if you're gonna walk with me, you gotta agree with what my word is. I, and I'm, I'm never gonna forget this teacher. I'm never, because when God started showing me how can two walk you live, I always, my mind always thought about that scripture as a man and woman, a couple. I never saw it as walking with God in agreement. But then when I began to look at it as walking with a God in agreement, how can two walk unless they agree? And I began to realize that I must be in agreement with God to walk with him. But to, to, but to be in agreement, I must understand that his ways are great. Because you don't want to be in agreement with something that you don't agree with. So when I study the word of God, do I agree with God's ways? Well, let's look at let's look at let's look at some more. 
Watch what he said in, in, in verse 15 in Galatians. He says, but if they bite or devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one another. God says, first of all, he loves someone. He said, don't bite and consume. I mean, don't use your words and use your mouth to consume and devour one another. Because if you walk with God, let me tell you something. When you agree with God, you won't love what God loves. If you love what God loves, you're not. You know what I learned about when you love what God loves? You will no longer. Right? If we obey God and love what he loves, you wouldn't judge people by being black or white. Because to not love what God loves, is to call to call anything ugly or cause something you didn't get that from God because God would never call his own creation ugly. Matter of fact, ugly came from man, and it came from man beginning to establish himself in his pride superior. You know, let me tell you how arrogant man has become. You want to tell you how arrogant, how arrogant we become? Who is man to name the first 50 most beautiful people in the world? Mm -hmm. See, y'all don't understand how, you don't understand how, how wicked that is. Who is man to tell that these are the most beautiful people in the world? Where did they get that standard from? Mm -hmm. Who told them that they were the most beautiful people in the world? What, 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 are, what criteria are you using that they are the most probably you using some man's ideology, some young man's ideal, which is flawed because all men don't see the same. Y'all get what I'm saying? And when you adopt that mentality, you now see and create a standard of what's beauty based on your own flaws. Your flaws you see through. You don't see through God's eyes. You don't see through love. You see through your flaws. And you want something that perceives, looks a certain way, or bit why? To make you think you somebody. To make you feel special or you have an identity because you now see through the flaws of your flesh. I know this. I know, because if you go to, this funny. if you go on my, God had to teach me this. If you go on my book from when I was in high school and you look at the women in my book, you know, when I was high school and college, and they all looked a little bit, they was all about five foot four, five, six. They all was about pecan, tan, they all, they all had this certain type of look to them. And it's funny, when God gave me my wife, she ain't look nothing like those women that was in my book. And I thought, God says, you know why I'm going to do that with you? Because you asked me for love. Because I asked, when, 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 when which asked for wisdom, when God asked me, God came to me and asked me a question, just like he asked Solomon. And Solomon said, give me wisdom. I said, God, give me love. Because I thought this. I don't know why I thought this. But I, when I got said, I thought, if you have love, you'll be free. If you have real love, you'll be free. Because you know you can't hate nobody. But, you, but he said, but God says, but if you want love, I'm going to have to show you things in you that don't love. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to show you your idea of love and crush it. And I was like, oh my God. And God began to crush my ideas. Because one, one of my ideas was love was if if I say something, you need to be agreeing with me. Come on, y'all, oh y'all gonna act like I'm the only one. If you say you love, you need to agree with me. If I if God says I'm gonna crush your idea of love, because you think your idea of love is when you were let, because when you was in the way, if, if she didn't agree with you, like deuces. You find somebody else. If she ain't going to be agreeing with you, do it. And then I thought my another ideal of love I thought was, well, what I want to do, I want to do. I don't care about what you want to do. You're going to do what I want to do. So God says, one of your ideas of love was, <laughs> I know it's crazy, but one of your ideas of love is that she had to do what you thought she had to do. She had to go where you thought she had to go. And I was like, okay. And see, some of y'all laughing, but the truth is some of y'all ideas of love is the same way. If he don't, if he don't, and then y'all, and then you want to tie it into your five love languages. Well, my love language is, um, somebody give me one. Touch. Touch. Somebody give me another one. Okay. Quality, time. quality time. So if he don't give me no quality time, I don't feel he loves me. So let me ask y'all a question. If he don't give you quality time and you don't feel he loves you, what you going to tell God? God, I want a divorce because he never gave me quality time. And God's going to be like, well, I don't, that, that's your idea of love, but my idea of love is you didn't give me quality time and I still love you. See, God will get you. you God will pull your trunk card. Mm -hmm. See, love will pull your trunk card because if your idea of quality, that's why I like the five love languages, but to me, there's a greater love than the five love languages. Because let me tell you what, I met a, I know a woman one time and she was talking about the five, and her, her love language was that giving gifts. What is that? What is that one called? Um, yeah. Yeah. Giving gifts. Mm -hmm. 
And her husband was a, a, her husband was a great guy. And she knew, she knew that God gave her her husband. But her husband wouldn't give her great. He, he, and her dad really met her love language. So I, I, I thought, so her husband didn't give, he would give gifts, but it, he didn't go out all the, he didn't do it the way she wanted. And she, it really brought her to a point where she was like really angry. She was like, mm -hmm. and, and what's funny was she started, and it, it started pouring on her love. And, so, and I said, so let me get this right. So if he don't meet your ideal of what your love language is, you're going to perceive this is not love and start withdrawing. Hmm. Now I'm going to ask you a question. How are you going to get away with that? With God? Because, because God asks you to present your body as a living, give your body. You, gonna give, you give God a three minute prayer at nighttime. God asks you to do something. To go somewhere, you're like, I don't feel like it. And yet his love never changed towards you. So how do you want to get away with God? See, I, I know, man, I know. I'm trying to find it. When you study the world, you'll start seeing people write stuff. And it's like, oh, this is so good. It's so good. But when you study the world, you're like, mm, I don't know if you should have wrote that that way because it don't really line up with the word of God too much. It don't line up with, because you're not going to be able to tell God I divorced my husband because he would because he wouldn't meet my uh, my love language. God God gonna say, but I thought I was your love language. And God will say, well, maybe you should have taught him. Maybe your love language, instead of expecting, maybe the key to it was for you to go ahead and show him what it looked like. Nah, I ain't with that God. Uh-uh. Now God, I ain't with all that because now I gotta sit there and be teaching him. He should already know that. Really? Maybe on your birthday, instead of expecting him what you really want, because watch this, y'all know how good, watch how good God is. God said, whatever a man sold, he won. Really? So maybe if you sold your love, maybe if you sold your love language, instead of like the new church always wanting something, maybe if you sold your love language, it would grow. Mm -hmm. What y'all think? Um, I think? I think it's true. Because if God's word is true, and he said, whatever a man sow. So maybe you so quick trying to expect him to be affectionate, but maybe if you so affectionate, and you, at the moment, how do we know it's true? Didn't God so love and you say? Amen. Didn't God so forgiveness and you feel forgiven? Come on, now let's think about it, but this ain't good now. What you have become, God sold it to you. Jesus sold it to you. He forgave us. We didn't deserve forgiving. Oh, we like we like to say mercy and grace brought me through. He sold because you weren't perfect. I know I wasn't. If you was perfect, raise your hand so I could throw some oil on you. So because I know you got some you know, delusion. You were not, but God sold mercy to you. And watch it. The, that's why the Bible says, oh, no man, anything but the so God says you owe somebody love why because he sold it to you he gave it to you and guess what a good father is going to teach you how to give what he gave to you because that's free he's going to teach you how to love like he love why so you can be able to reap it because your flesh ideal love if he lets you reap that you're not going to be happy if he lets you reap what you actually want to sow you're not going to be happy because you why you don't believe me go back to your past relationships and you'll see that what you sold didn't bring what you thought. Are we getting this tonight? So a good father, he can't let your heart leave. He got to leave. Why? Because you don't know. Because when he let you leave before you accepted him, when you was leading, when the way you think, your emotion, your desire, what you sold, you sold to your flesh. And you got corruption. You got foolishness. I bet you there's not a person in this room who encountered relationships without God couldn't tell you a test, couldn't give you a story about hurt, about pain, about disappointment, about regret. Why? And we get mad at other people for stuff we sold. Now, don't get me wrong. People, people can do things that are so wicked. And wretched. But we got to take some accountability. What accountability? Not for what they did wrong, but what you chose. 
that you didn't let love lead you to be able to see. Because come on, tell you something. If you let God lead you, God will see. Oh God, oh, you can't, you can fool man. You cannot fool God. Because it wasn't this in the book of Samuel. God says, man judges the outward appearance. When God chose David, Saul was looking at his brothers. There has to be a king among all these. These men are men of great statue. These men were looking, these men look like kings. When Samuel saw David, he said, this little boy, I know God ain't talking about this little boy right here. God says, you looking at the statue of a man. I'm looking at the heart. God says, I'm looking at how he think. How you, why, we'll say, well, how is God, come on. Do you know that, that, that um, David was a sheep tender? Let me tell you what David did. David was so loyal to his sheep that when a lion went after the sheep, the word says that David snatched the life. He put his own life. This is the heart of God. He put his own life in danger to save a lamb. He says, that's the heart I'm looking at. One who would sacrifice himself to save something that someone else may perceive that it has no value. But David said, it has value because I'm no shepherd over it. My wife has value. Why? Because I'm the shepherd over her. So I'm not going to let the lion devour her. I'm not going to let the lion about why they have that because there's nothing that God has committed. See, y'all got to understand. Everybody in this room, you have great value. Your value didn't come from your money. Your value didn't come from your education. Your value don't come from what you drive. Your value don't come from name brands because all those things come and go. Your value came because God said something thousands of years ago. He said, let us create man in our image and after our likeness. How can you be created in the image and likeness of God and not have great value? Even the angels say, who is man that you think so highly of him? The angels, it's written in the word of God. The angels say, who is man, God, that you think so? What is this that you think so highly of him? But when we watch this, for many of us, we don't see ourselves with that great value. Why? Because the relationships you've been in. You see yourself... We, you know how much God has to restore us, our self-esteem, because of how people have seen us and how we have accepted how people have seen us and how people have made us feel and how we have made ourselves feel. And God has to begin to restore by showing you what love and the love he had for you, everlasting love, a love that no matter how wrong you did, he saw, he looked past your faults and saw what you needed and what you needed was someone to love you out of your situation. You look at somebody, you need someone not to point out all your, your, your errors, but to want someone who can see your greatness. Because once you saw your greatness, you'll be able to overcome your errors. So we like to point out people's errors, as in pointing out their errors is going to make them overcome. No, if I begin to show you how great you are, you'll overcome your errors. See, you don't have to teach a woman or man not to have sex. Teach them how great they are. The way they see themselves will begin to dictate their decisions. Amen. That's why God will be like, don't have sex, don't, don't, don't do it. No, he'll be like, no, you're beautiful. You're wonderful. Man. Look at the price I'm willing to pay. And when you begin to see yourself like God, you're like, no, nah, homeboy, we don't roll like that. No homegirl. Why? Because when you see, anytime you see something that has great value, value always motivates protection. You can tell when somebody values something. Why? Because what you value, you will always protect. That's why God, that's why he protects us. Because he sees the value in what he created. And see, Satan tried to convince us that your value is in what you buy, what you, your name, rent, why? So when you think that's your value, all somebody have to do is find your value and they can purchase you. See, all I know the game. That's why I wrote that book, For the Holy. Why? In that book, God taught me something in that book. I found out in the world, all you got to do is listen to a woman long enough, find her value. Pretend her value, and you purchase her. Oh, your value is time? So I know from the beginning, I'm going to give you a lot of time. Y'all didn't see me. That dude give her so much time. Girl, I'm coming to see you. I make it because I'm off of work. I don't even want to go home because I just want to come see you. I just want to see you, girl. I'm on my way home. I'm leaving your house. I just want to hear you. 12 o'clock at night, you sounded like a frog. Uh, I'm just thinking about you. Why? That's your value system. See, your love language can also be used by Satan to draw you. Mm -hmm. That's why you want, you want God's love language, not yours. Because Satan know how to use your love language too. Oh, you like stuff? 
Girl, I'm gonna buy. What you like? What you want? We in the mall. Move on. I gotta talk with you. I saw you looking at that bracelet. I'm gonna let you walk down the wall a little bit. I'm gonna purchase. And then when I put it on your arm, I'm like, oh. And then when you get home, I'm gonna tell your girls, girl, I know, I love you. My God, I love you. Girl, I, I just looked at it and I walked down the mall. He, I thought he was going to the bathroom. And I came back and, girl, he gotta love me. Because your love, why? Because he met my love language. So y'all better know the word because some things can be set up and you're sitting there thinking that's real and that thing can roll and Satan will use that very thing. And he, if, you, if you be honest with yourself, it was used when you was in the world. Your love language was used in the world to lure you and thought you was in love and you got used. Because you looked at what he was doing or what she was doing, but you wouldn't look at that right. to find out why they were doing it. Mm. To find out why they did See, God look at what people, man look at what you're doing. God look at why you did it and realize your intention. People, there's a lot of basket, there's a lot of football players that buy food. <laughs> and they're like, they're so nice. God said, no, they're not. They got to spend that money for tax reasons. Mm -hmm. He said, I know their real motive. Their motive is not love. They have a reason for that. I took you to dinner for a reason. Mm -hmm. And when you won't do nothing, you wonder why we won't go to dinner again. <laughs> Are we getting this tonight? But see, when I walk in agreement with God, I learned about a love. That love, even when I'm not perfect. God, I learned about a love. I learned about a forgiveness. That when I messed up, he not born. I've been I've been rejected all my life. But when I walk in agreement with God, I found out, God, you know my worst. You know everything about me. You know the worst thing about me, but yet you won't reject me. Oh, God, God, I don't understand this kind of love. What kind of love that you still hold me and you cut me and you say, oh, how I love you. Oh, how I love you. And yet, God, even the thoughts I had when I was in church were not of you and I'm struggling this, but yet your arms are extended talking about how you, I don't understand this kind of love, God. Because when I let somebody else see how I think, they ain't want nothing to do with me. When I let somebody else know what I was struggling with, when I let them know I was struggling with my dad not being there, and I was struggling with being abused, I was struggling. And when I let somebody else know, they took advantage of that. So God, I'm afraid to really love somebody because when I let man know how I really feel, they use it for their benefit. But you, You, when I'm in my worst state, when I'm like, God, deuces, I don't even want nothing to do with you. What kind of relentless love is this? Because I don't understand it. Because even when my mom got tired of me, she put me out. So I don't even understand a love that, that's so relentless that pursues me when, oh, come on, y'all. What kind of love pursues me when I don't even want it? I don't understand it. But God says, walk with me. Come on. That's why Satan, he don't want you to get in here. He don't mind you dancing in church. He don't mind you singing in church. Just don't open up the love story. Because if you open up the love story, you, might begin to, you may begin to realize how valuable you are. And then if you begin to realize who valuable you are, and how the Bible says, Joseph, he said that you were not purchased, that we were not purchased with corruptible things as silver and gold. God says, silver and gold couldn't even purchase your soul. It took him himself to come down here. Something without spot or wrinkle. He said it was the precious blood of the lamb. And yet, you get purchased. You can always tell how valuable something is, uh, what somebody's willing to pay for. God said, I paid the son of my, I, he said, I paid my life for you. That's how valuable you are. So I dare you say that you're not valuable. I dare you say that you're no good. Because some of us, you have allowed people to see you. You allow yourself to see yourself in a way that God says, I don't agree with you. You are priceless. You are precious. Right, precious? Right, precious? Yeah. You're precious. You're precious. But God, I'd be lying. And I, I did this. God said, I know. But I like that song. I paid it all. So why you keep why you keep talking about am I saved? You don't know. See when you all.
always wonder if you're saved is because you don't really understand yeah. his love. Because the Bible says nothing can pluck you from his love. But God, I'm struggling. He knew you were struggling when he called you. See, you're not like, man, God don't call you not knowing everything. Or we somebody should have screamed on there. Somebody should have been like that. What, what are you saying? He know what you're gonna, he know what you've done, what you're gonna do, and what you he know what you have done, what you're gonna do, and what he know everything about you when he calls you. Don't believe me, study David. If you don't believe God knows everything about a man before he called him, study David. Because God said David was a man after his own heart. But the man that God said was after his own heart, isn't it ironic that the man he said was after his own committed adultery, murdered someone? He like, God, how could you say this, brother? But this was the same one that repented, confessed his sins, and said, the same one who wrote Psalms 51. Lord created me a clean heart, renewing me. He confessed his wrong. He didn't try to hide his dysfunction. He said, God, I'm dysfunctional. But I know you the one can clean me up. If I could just, if I could just walk with you. I'm gonna read this and we're gonna be finished. Watch this. But if they bite and devour one another, take heed that they be not consumed one another. This I say then, walk in the spirit. Ye shall not fulfill the desires of your flesh. When you walk in the word, you will not fulfill the lust of your flesh. In other words, to put you to death, you got the fellowship with somebody different. Come on, somebody. To put you to death, you got to put your heart to death, you got a fellowship, you got a fellowship with a new heart. Now I'm gonna show you how y'all know this is true. Have you ever had, have you ever thought one way, felt one way, and then connect with someone, and that person changed how you thought about yourself? How you thought about yeah. money? How you thought about everything else? Anybody been there? Mm -hmm. You connect, and you say they don't. I can't. Oh my God! Why did I connect with that person? Because what you'll say is, I lost myself in them. Amen. Anybody been there? Yes. I lost myself in them. I lost my identity. She looking like I lost my identity. Come on, have you ever been there? See, God's principles are real, but see the bottom line, we don't, we don't, we don't put them together. So when you could, that's why God said, be careful what you connect with. Why? Because what you connect with can take you down a road of destruction for life. And he said, you better know their heart. I don't care how they look. I don't care what they drive it. Know what you connect with. There are people who hop in a car and connect with somebody that never came back home after that. Amen. She was a she was a great middle school student. He was a great middle school student. They connect with people in high school. They are out of school. Look at someone say, watch what you connect with. Watch what you connect with. Say, watch what you connect with. Watch what you connect with. Because they can take you down a road. And sometimes you might not get back. They take you down a broad road. Why God can't take you down a narrow road. Watch what you can. So God says, I need your, I need you to connect your heart. God wants you to connect your heart with. Don't say nothing about my heart. <laughs> His heart. Your thinking, your emotions, and your desires. He said, come to me. I'm going to change. And guess what? Just like that person you connected with in the world that made you see yourself. He said, I'm going to make you see yourself as priceless. You're the apple of my eye. When you connect, when you start walking with him in his word, you don't have no problem saying, forgive me. I'm sorry. Why? Because even Jesus said on the cross, Lord, forgive me. Isn't this funny? We nailed him to the cross and he asked him God to forgive us. What kind of love that is? They followed Jesus for three days. The same people that followed Jesus for three days in the scripture, he said this. Watch what Jesus said. Early, he says, they follow me because they're belly. They didn't follow him because they wanted him. They followed him because he gave him, turned the five loaves and two fish to be dead on. He said he knew why they was following him. And yet he still fed. He knew it before they followed and still fed. Are we getting this? So it's, a, it's an interesting thing when you know something bad about someone, and yet you still continue to love them anyway. Mm. 
Amen. When you can, when you continue to be like, you know what, I'm gonna bless you. I know you spoke. I, I know you. I know you talked about me. I know you talked me behind my back. And when I get up to go to, the, when I get up to go eat, I'm gonna ask you where your home is. And they looking at you like, no, I, it's not. Oh no, I know, no, I know what you said. But who I'm connected with, the heart. He taught me how to love like that. You, y'all heard me tell this story a long time ago. I never forget this story because God, I know this was a part when God was training me. I was at, I was working at this elementary school, and there was this lady. She was a black lady, and she was hungry. And when she was hungry, she was like, "Man, I'm so hungry." So I went around the school and I was borrowed. I went and I knew somebody. I knew my school. I borrowed ten dollars. I didn't have it, so I brought ten, and I gave her the money. And she went and got something to eat. And I, and I paid back the lady. Let me tell you how God tried this. What I'm about to tell you, this is a true story. This, this is how God tried me. There was a Spanish lady. And she was running around the school. She said, I need $10. And she was like running around the school. And she was she she, she asked for $10. And I, I heard God ask me this question so clear. He said, you're not going to do the same thing for her that you did for her. It didn't happen at the same time. So I had to go borrow $10. He said, don't you ever move based on external familiarity. You always move according to my heart. Mm-hmm. My heart don't look at black, white, Spanish. Women. My heart look at the need of a person. So he said, if you did it for her, if you were willing to go get $10 to somebody so they can eat, and she needed it, then why won't you? You have to do this. If you want to move in my love, you have to do it. He said, because I never look at the outside of me when I move in love. Because love has no color. Think about it. What color is love? It belongs to anyone who chooses to see and allow it to grow in. Love belongs to the person, watch how I say this, who receives the seed, eats it, and it grows. That's that's what love is. I'm not talking about this worldly love. I'm talking about the love that bear all, believe all, hope all, endure, the love that cannot fail, because God's love does not fail. Because if his love fail, we wouldn't be able to be saved. Because the Bible said he so loved the world that he gave his son. He was motivated by love. A love that knew he was liars, cheaters, backbiters, slanderers, and yet he still wanted to. So he has to teach us how to love like that. So he is calling us to walk together in agreement with him. That's where you at, right? You're like, well, I'm in a life. God has called me to walk together in agreement. Then why I'm having all these storms? So you can say, so you can say, I'm God in this storm, I found out I need you more. See, wise people in storms call on God more. Foolish people run away from God. It's the truth. Foolish people run away from God. Wise people run to God. Why? Because why wouldn't you run? Come on, think about it. But people, y'all ever heard people say, Why would somebody go on through something? They always run to God. That, that's the stupidest question ever. Who else you going to? When you, if your mama told you not to go out the house and you went out the house and got hurt, I promise you, you're gonna run to your mama. <laughs> Why? Because you know she loved you. You're gonna run to the one you know that loves you. Right? We run to God. And God has called some people. I know also, it, it was a word tonight. I hope we grab this. The last part of this word says this. Here it goes. Says, this I say then, walk in the spirit. And yet you shall not fulfill the lust of your flesh, your desires of your flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. In other words, your desires, your heart will lust against the heart of God. It's the truth. Our heart will war against the heart of God. God knows it. He's telling you in the word. He says right here, watch what he says. For the flesh desires, lusts. That word lust means desires. It's against the spirit. That word spirit, that's a capital spirit. That means God's spirit. That means your heart, our heart, does not always want to do what God heart want to do. Have you ever found yourself in that situation? Come on, don't, don't lie. Let's be real. Because mm-hmm. my heart wanted to curse you out. I ain't gonna lie. My heart, if you don't get your, but you better be glad God heart had me. Because my God heart was like, just believe me. Just, you were like, just believe me. Go, go, go. Let me walk away. Because I want to operate according to God's heart. Because God heart brings life. My heart don't bring life. My heart brings drama. Amen? Amen. Listen, 
He says, for the flesh desires against the spirit and the spirit is against the flesh. They are at war for one another. Watch what he says. That's why sometimes you feel like you are in a battle within your head. You are in a war with your flesh, your fleshly nature and your spiritual nature. I don't want, why am I saying, don't think it's strange. It's in the Bible. You're at war. And one thing about, let me tell you what's good about it too. If you are at war, then God is with you. Because if you're not at war, then God ain't with you. Because when you have no problem doing wickedness to people, that means you have, no, you have not been illuminated from God's heart. You have not moved to the place where your heart has been illuminated. Because when your conscience is not awakened, because when I, let me put it this way. When I was in the world, there was a time that I slept with a woman. I ain't get out the bed to my, oh, that was the most terrible thing in the world. I hate that. I hate myself. This was terrible. <laughs> I got up to my dad, well, good, girl, we're going to get together again. You know what I mean? Love you, girl. When? We're going to do this again. Why? Because I had no consciousness of righteousness. I didn't care about her. You know? I cared about what I wanted. But when I accepted Jesus Christ and the word began to awaken me to God's heart, because remember now, Jesus is the word. And if Jesus is the word, then the word is awakening me to God's heart. Amen. And if the word is awakening me to the, remember, out of the abundance of the heart, what? Out of the abundance of the mouth, for what? So when I hear the word and I'm in agreement with the word, it's going to teach me how to love people, how to deal with people. So when you hear people talking about, you know what? God gave me a season not to deal with you no more. You're like, well, I don't really see that in the word. If he told you to love your enemy, how much more should you love the brothers and sisters? See, we don't, we, we, oh, what is revelation some of us get? But see, some of us, we never answered the call to God's heart. We just wanted God's hand. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Just like in the world. We never answered the call to the heart. We just wanted to say, God, give me a husband. God, give me a wife. God, give me a car. God, give me some money to go to college. God, give me, give me, give me. You just wanted his hand. You did not want his heart. And if you look at relationships in the world, they don't want your heart. They just want what you can give them. That's called, let me tell you what they call that, using people. God, all I want, I'm praying and I'm asking, God, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want. Let me explain something to you all. The Bible says that God calls it the rain on the just as well as the unjust. You do not have to accept God for God to cause you to prosper. That's how good he is. You don't, let me tell you something. There are people who are atheists, who are millionaires. They do not believe in God. Even though the sun's sitting in the sky and the stars and everything in the earth testifies that there's a desire. You know you got, you know you got to be blind to not believe there's a God. Why? Because the earth actually testifies there's a design. Come on. And, and logic does too. There is nothing just made itself. Guess what? Somebody designed this. One day it just didn't say, boom, I want to be a globe. Someone designed this. Someone design this and guess what someone designed you that's why you are so wonderfully made that's why if you cut yourself your body is so your body off the chain it will begin to mend the cut and heal itself there is no computer every computer is an imitator of the mind that god gave you there is no computer as fast that can hold your computers are imitators of what they're trying, what they're trying to imitate, what God designed. And even what in our head, we come, if we unlocked, it ain't even unlocked. That's what y'all hear what I'm saying? God is the greatest designer. You see, we we we, we were like, we are amazed that give me a great painting. Give me a uh, Picasso. Picasso. Me a, Picasso. All he's doing is imitating God. Everything he painted is something God did. He, you see somebody, they, they, they paint the sky. Have you ever walked outside and looked at the sky like, boy, God, you off the chain, God. Sometimes you need to just say, you ever been to the beach and see how the, 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 the sun come up from the, the ocean and the water roaring? You be like, God. Have you ever been and watched the different difference? animals, the fish, and be like, my God, God. Only humans have a problem. Dogs, you can see all oh, different type of dogs. It's only humans that hate the difference. Only humans can find something to hate in the beauty of God. 
well, you ain't black, you ain't white, or you ain't Spanish, or you ain't Haitian. Dogs don't hate the beauty of different dogs. Flowers don't hate the beauty of different flowers. Matter of fact, when a, I, I think even someone gave me some flowers, the beauty in the flowers they gave me was the variety of them in the colors. Put a variety of people together, we are fine. We, I said, if, I always say this. If, we, if everybody was the same color and we had different color eyes, we would hate each other because of color eyes. You brown eyed people, you are demons. You green eyed people, you, you, you are so wicked. Everybody's eyes need to be black. Now you got it. No. God is the creator, designer. He loves variety. Why? Because variety is beautiful. Listen. These are the kind, okay, let me, for the flesh, I'm going to finish this time for real, y'all. For the flesh, <laughs> lust is against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary, the one to another. How can two walk together unless they what? Agree. But the Bible says that the flesh and the spirit are contrary. They do not agree. So they cannot walk together. So to walk with God, that's why the first thing that Jesus did when he went into the wilderness was fast 40 days. He killed off his flesh. No one, because his flesh can't walk with the spirit. His, his flesh. That's why God will tell you to fast. Wow. When you fast, you kill off your flesh. And you can begin to what? Be able to receive from God in the spirit. I says, so that ye cannot do the things that ye, that, that ye would. But if ye be led by the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, the word of the spirit. I'm just for time's sake. And the fruit, oh, watch this. And the fruit of the spirit. Now y'all got to get this. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. Let me ask y'all a question. If, and y'all got to talk to me, if the works of the flesh is adultery and the fruit of the spirit is love, are they opposites or are they the same? Opposites. So if somebody going to walk in love and they move in adultery, is that an agreement with God? No. Y'all got to see this. I want y'all to see this in scripture. The fruit of the spirit is joy. Fornication. Can fornication, somebody on fornicate means if somebody fornicating, can that lose it, it, it can can they lose their joy? Yes. Peace, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. If you look at the fruit of the spirit and the fruit of the flesh, they are opposite of one another. They do not agree. So you can't walk with God and live in your flesh and perceive that you are in agreement with God. So let me tell you, I mean something. So when you start becoming in agreement with your flesh, you're stepping out of agreement with God. And God is love. His love is so crazy about you that he has sent somebody to rebuke you or send somebody to tell you, you're out of agreement. Get back. You, 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 and you'll start knowing why. Because things will start getting crazy in your life. Wait a minute, something wrong. Maybe I'm not walking. Maybe I'm because remember now, I'm walking with God. I have peace. Now, watch this. Peace don't mean trouble don't come. But with God, I can have peace in the midst of trouble. Why? Because if God be for me, who can be against me? Mm -hmm. So we measure peace by everything. No, peace is not measured by everything being okay. Peace is measured by who is with you. Because mm -hmm. come on, if somebody was bullying you and you was by yourself, you wouldn't have no peace. But if somebody, if he was bullying you and you had your big brother, you would have peace in the midst of the bullying. Why? Because I got my big brother here. So what you going to do now? What you going to do now, huh? <laughs> peace is about who is dwelling with you. COVID-19, oh, yes, it's real. People are dying. But why can't some people have peace in it? Because who do they dwell with them? Because the one that you dwell with you has power over death itself. Fear. He has power over fear. And I love how she said, because the Bible says God didn't give you the spirit of fear. Love, because Bible says love casts out fear. Why? When you believe somebody loves you, why would you have, see you see many people have fear in relationships because they wonder if this person will do you like you did the last person, or can I trust this person? But the Bible said love casts out fear. Why? Because love is commitment. Love is loyalty. 
is di- yeah, we got to get this because I see what God is trying. There is a difference, people. There is a difference between someone walking and following God and someone who is following and walking with themselves. And yet we are coming to a time where it almost will look like there's a difference. Mm-hmm. And we're not studying to be able to tell that there is a difference. There, you cannot walk in your flesh and walk in your spirit because you're not. Once you start walking in your flesh, you're no longer in agreement with God anymore. And the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? I want to agree with God. So if I want to agree with God, I have to let my flesh die. And to let my flesh die, I got to let my mind start being changed to who I'm walking with. I'm going to have to let my emotions start being changed to who I'm walking with. I'm going to have to let my desires start being conformed to who I'm walking with. Because I want to be healed. Are there any questions? <laughs> Are there any questions? Come on, let's be real. Because some of us, the problem is we're trying to walk with God and walk in your flesh at the same time. Let me help you and me out. Me and you, that's impossible. The Bible says you can't serve two masters. You can't serve two ideals. You will have to love one or hate the other. Because once you, it's like this. Thank you. I can't be married to beautiful and start dating. Because why? Because everything I'm giving you belong to her. And guess what's going to happen? When she start losing what belonged to her, to you, she gonna start feeling like she alone in the marriage. Why? Because the trust and the love and the commitment and loyalty, I'm splitting it. And yet, what I'm splitting makes one person feel, when I'm with you, giving it to you, she gonna feel, that's why when God, that's why God, no, God, I know in the Bible, you see a lot of men marrying many different women. That was never God's idea. That if you go to the beginning, you will not find that. You find that in men. And God allowed some things until he got men to the, you know, and God do it today. He allows some things until we get to the place where we know that. Teachers do it. Teachers will allow you to, to do a certain thing to the, until they get to the point where you really know that. And when you know that, they be like, no, we're not going to do that like that no more. Come on, when you first move in somebody's house, they may allow you to take off your shoes, walk around with your shoes, and they may tell you, okay, take off your shoes. But after a while, when they begin to take, take off their shoes, they allowed you to get away with it a couple times because they knew you were just learning. After a while, they're going to say, no, you know better than that. That's called being patient, long suffering with someone. So God will allow us to do some certain things for the Lord, but don't think that's because he allowed that, that he was down with, okay with that. Because the, every love... I found that no one reason why I worked for 25 with my wife, it worked so long. Because when I stopped playing games and stopped cheating, I realized if I invested my love, my loyalty into one person, how can I be, how can I, how can I not become great? If I'm in, if I'm in, if I'm given, if I'm in communion with God and I'm thinking like God, forgiveness and mercy, that doesn't mean we're gonna always agree. But I learned how to love a pastor who disagreed. She learned how to love me. You know, that's probably was an easy thing because I'm so lucky. I'm just... <laughs> Are there any questions? How many of us grasp what we, what we anybody did we get here? And what I see more than anything God's saying today, he kind of punched it in that eye, that idea that you can serve both of them. He's making it clear. No, but he's also making clear how you get there. He's not mad at you. He's saying, let me show you how to get there. Don't worry about no husband. Don't worry about no woman. Don't worry about no children. Just come walk with me. Okay. I'll take care of everything else. I got everything else. You ain't got to worry about none of that. Forget about all that. Just come fellowship with me. I'm the one who will teach you how to love and move. In me, you move and live and have my life. You're being. We good? Mm-hmm. Good? Mm-hmm. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word tonight. Lord, I pray that everyone under this word that heard this word, they will be blessed. And that this word will take root in them. And it will begin to blossom in them what you desire to be blossomed. That they will know that it is running towards you is where love is. 
Running towards you is where forgiveness and mercy and grace is. Running towards you is where kindness is. And God, we're going to run into people that are going to say things, going to speak all manner of evil against. We're going to run into a world that's hurt and broken. And God, for us to be able to win this world, we need to run into you so we can teach them, so they can see you in us instead of seeing us. Because two broken people don't heal nothing, God. So we thank you for your word tonight. And if there's anybody under my voice who has never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and say, let night be the night that you open up your heart to the love of God. Let the night be the night that you say, Lord, come into my heart and be Lord. Teach me how to love in the way you love. Because I've never seen a greater love than someone who, who laid down their life, who did no wrong, but you laid down your life for my sins. You became the lamb. You became the sacrifice that I might have life in you. So God, we thank you. We honor you and we give you praise tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.